Looking at the state of this top cover, you can see here that that top cover is quite clean there where the flash shoe was sitting. That tells me that someone's had that off and cleaned it because normally there's a certain amount of grime under there and uh, corrosion as often as not where moisture's splashed the camera, run through underneath, never been dried and then it sets up a nice little bit of corrosion at that point. Here you can see by the state of these pieces of glass that these have not been removed from the camera for cleaning which is why we're going to do that now. That glass is dirty, uh, it's almost black around the edges and it's very yellow. I'm just going to clean the inside of the camera top cover now with a bit of naphtha. This is generally quite clean but as I say no one had had that plate off. So where that plate sat that was quite dirty. I'll clean round these the apertures here for the windows. That top cover is otherwise clean because it's been cleaned previously, as has the shoe. Right, this piece. Now I can see a little tiny rust spot here, which tells me that this has been splashed before. That'll be of no consequence to us. And all I'm doing there is wiping that to make sure that there's no oil or grease on it. And turn my attention to the glass. I'll start with the viewfinder eyepiece and I'll start with the outer surface because it's the easiest to get to and the easiest to see. So I'll clean that and that glass looks pretty nasty. Um, if I hold a piece of white, something white under there, see if I can, I mean, you, might, you may be able to see that if I put a piece of white paper inside there. There's a big glob of something nasty on the inside of that. So, since we have our glass missing from the front, we have good access straight back with a cotton bud. And by rotating that, you can clean that glass surface quite well. And because we know we've got the outside of the glass clean, we can look through that little window now and see how much success we've had at cleaning it. And I'd say it looks pretty good. So I'll just give that a... Another go. You'll find that glass, particularly in a case like that, doesn't automatically come clean with the first attempt. And typically it's because the deposits on there are oily. And the oily deposits are not very well cleaned by the glass cleaner. The glass cleaner is just not a very good solvent for oil. But given enough attempts, you'll find that you'll shift it. So here I'm cleaning the front glass for the viewfinder and rangefinder ports. As I said, they're quite dirty, they're quite black in places and quite yellowed. Well, the yellowing is certainly oily deposits. These always take a considerable amount of cleaning. They have had 
greasy fingerprints for the last how old's this camera? Oh it's well over so well over 65 it's a pensioner. So this has had greasy fingerprints right back. This camera was probably made in about 1952. It's not unusual for the glass to be chipped or damaged at the edges as this piece is in here is in fact. There's a very slight chip on the top surface here. There's a very slight chip on this corner. There's also some piece of crud on there that doesn't want to move. That might need to be encouraged with a toothpick. When the viewfinder glass has got chips in it like that, you can Put your money on it that the camera has been dropped. That's better. The front surface of the glass well actually the rear surface of the glass is the most important part to get clean when you're doing these pieces because it'll be sitting in against this frame here inaccessible so you can't clean it once it's all assembled and it'll annoy you Now putting the glass back in, in place is interesting. These little pieces of glass have a bevel on one edge. One of the long edges in both cases has a bevel. The other sides will be square basically. Now the beveled edge is beveled to clear up in here against the body, against that very slight curve that you get on the inside of the body. So beveled edge goes to the top. So the beveled edge is up this way to the front. You need to balance this on your finger and put it back up into position. Now if you're successful the glass won't fall out of place. and keeping plenty of pressure on it to make sure the glass doesn't shift you can get your two fixing screws back in place check that the glass is seated correctly and adjust once you've got it all adjusted you hold that frame firmly towards the front of the camera do up your two screws tightly and you should have it should hold that glass firmly back in place no rattles and when you look through the window from the front the glass should look nice and clean
that looks good. I can just see a little thread of cotton there. So that top cover is good. Now I can see, though you probably can't, I can just see by the reflection that there's this very slight depression at this corner. That's where the camera's been dropped on its head at some stage and the flash who has taken the brunt of it. Very slight. So it hasn't been dropped from a great height. It may have been dropped from a very low height. Or it may have had something dropped on the camera. However, it's certainly not an issue that needs to be resolved. It can only be seen when the flash shoe has been removed from the camera. I'm very carefully doing these screws up, making sure I don't slip with the screwdriver. One of these screws here, there are scratches in the flash shoe at that point. Now they've been done with the tip of a screwdriver. And it wasn't me. The top cover in place. Now before I took the film advance lever off this camera, I made sure that I had the film advance lever out at 90 degrees from the body like this. That makes it easy to put everything back together again afterwards. So, as I said earlier, one of these screws for holding the top cover in place was not the correct one. It's a longer one. A longer screw must go at the viewfinder end, not at the film advance end. Because at the film advance end it would foul that plate inside there and it would all turn to custard. So, a little guide our bush goes on the top there. Our rewind knob in place, something through the fork to stop it turning. That's our rewind in, only the advanced to go. And the advanced, as I said, the frame counter is damaged. Uh, I had to re replace the Uh, frame counter pull, but that's not the damage I'm talking about. The damage is here, I'm going to zoom you in. Alright, the damage is here. You can see the state of this wheel. You see how it's all polished up there and shiny. That's because it's distorted out of shape. And here, let's wipe this uh, grease off. Here you can see that these points are damaged. They've been pushed up out of shape. And here, the slots are damaged. It's rounded off and basically what's happened is that someone has misassembled this. They've taken those parts, not aligned them correctly, assembled the top. Whoops, you're losing it. I might get you out of the picture again. So basically, here we go. What's happened is this. Someone has taken these parts and misassembled them. They have placed this piece on the top here out of alignment. Put the film disc on the top, the frame counter disc on the top, assembled the lot, tightened up the screw, and because those parts aren't aligned, it has damaged them. So this piece is damaged, these tabs have been pushed up, and they're very rough. I don't know how I'd go about damaging the surface like that. It's like someone's been scratching at it with something. 
This piece is damaged because the edges of the slot, the edges of the slot here are damaged on both sides, but this side worse. Our frame counter dial is damaged. You can see the roughness here. It's very rough. It means it was probably out of alignment and the other part has rotated against it most likely to cause that damage. I don't recall seeing anything quite as bad as that. I'm going to have to replace all of these parts. Those three parts are just shot. I'll zoom you back out. This is hopeless. I'm telling you all about things you can't even see. That disc is damaged. I'll need to replace it. This little pull here, this counterpiece, that ratchet, that's damaged. That'll need to be replaced. This piece here is damaged and I'll need to replace it. If I replace all those parts, I expect that I will be able to get the frame counter to work correctly and more importantly, it will register the end of film at frame number one, not frame number two. So, now to sort through my parts. Back shortly. Okay, I found the parts, assembled them. I have a good working frame counter that stops I'll zoom you in yeah it locks at number one so that's sorted that was the problem and now we have the frame counter is good our shutter is good Rangefinder is good, film advance is good. This camera is ready for a final polish up and then that can go back to its owner. So it was a bit of a marathon I suppose you could say. It had a good selection of problems. And looking back to see what it is I've had to deal with. Well, basically it needed a service, basically it needed to be stripped right down to the base because it was full of loose screws and would have required stripping down regardless. The shutter had been, was missing some components, it was never going to work, the components were present, they just needed to be put back in place, the shutter did need to be serviced anyway. To get it to uh, behave correctly. What else have I had to deal with? Of course I had a problem with the cocking action of the shutter. That the outer case here was um, damaged, distorted. So that the curved rack wouldn't track smoothly. And that was preventing the film advance lever from returning smoothly. The range finder, there was nothing particularly wrong with the range finder. It needed cleaning, cleaning and adjusting, that's quite normal. The leather on the base of the camera, that had that horrible black, uh, thick black tarry muck there for adhesive. That's been dealt with. The film advance lever, the frame counter pawl or spring was broken, needed to be replaced. But that wasn't the only problem. The counter itself, these components were all badly damaged and needed to be replaced. But that's all sorted out. So this is a, a fairly early example of the Retina 2A camera. You can tell that because it has the small rewind knob with a film reminder dial down on the top plate like a Retina 2 Type 014. But those dials are not interchangeable, they're not the same. I think on the 014 this dial was solid brass. The figures were engraved on the dial and it had been chromed and the figures filled in with black paint. 
on this dial it's a chromed brass dial but the piece with the the legend with the numbers and things on it that's a separate piece that's glued in place the plating on that separate piece is very poor I haven't yet seen a good example but so that's usually down to the brass just like this that's quite common so, all in all, it's a reasonable example of the camera. Um, it's by no means a pretty one. The lens certainly has its share of marks. Um, as you'll recall, the rear lens component was actually cracked. And that had been caused by drop damage and of course I had to uh, break the retainer ring out in order to open that lens up, the rear lens up and straighten the housing enough to replace that piece of glass. Typical of all the early Retina 2A cameras what features have we got that's typical for those? Rewind, we've already covered that. The film reminder dial is on the top plate. But the shutter type. The shutter type is a Compur Rapid. So it only has the single flash sync, which is effectively an X sync. Or electronic flash. The flash contacts make at the point where the blades reach the fully open position. The struts, I forgot about the struts, the bellows struts in this camera, they were a problem. The rivets were loose and needed to be riveted up tight. The struts were slightly bent, needed to be straightened up. The slots where the slot where the rivets run were loose and that, that allowed a lot of play in the front standard. That had made the front standard off square. It had also produced a lot of rattle at that point and that means that effectively that the focus would not remain fixed. You could focus it and depending on how you'd wiggled your camera it would be moving effectively in or out and your focus point would be shifting. So there we have it, that camera can go. That's given me enough problems I think and uh, now I'll get on to a nice straightforward job with a bit of luck. Now I have just finished servicing a Retina 2A, an early Retina 2A with a Compura Rapid shutter and I'm just embarking on another Retina 2A of exactly the same description. Except in this case the camera was complete, it wasn't a kit set and it looked comparatively tidy. So I'm working my way through it. I have the uh, body components cleaned. Um, the mechanical components are all in the degreaser at the moment. I've just finished cleaning up the top cover, cleaning up the rangefinder and adjusting that, getting that all correct. Just turned my attention to the shutter. So I'm dismantling the shutter and I pull out all the loose components from the mechanism plate prior to disassembly. And I notice that this tag here, which holds the spring back for the main um, main lever, was loose. I thought that's a bit unusual. And I looked at the screw head, and the screw head is quite scarred up. And I thought that's a bit unusual. And I noticed the screw head at the other end is a bit scarred up too, and I thought that's a bit unusual. And then I looked at the um, retard gear train. And someone has completely gutted that retard gear train. It has no components in it. So although the shutter fired, I didn't bother to check it at all the speeds, because why would you? It would have fired at all the speeds, but it would have fired at the same speed in every case. We have a retard gear train here, completely devoid of everything it needs in order to work. The pallets are present, but the pallet wheel 
the and all the other wheels are completely missing. So I thought this was a camera that had been comparatively unmolested. It would seem that I was wrong. This puts everything in an entirely new light. It does explain how it got a thumbprint on the inside of the rear lens group. I was wondering how that got there. Somebody's been right into this and uh, completely buggered it up. I will have to find a new retard gear train and hopefully the rest of the job will go smoothly. So even on a day when you think that you're onto a straightforward job with no surprises unlike the last one you can still get surprises. <laughs>